Hello, everybody, and welcome to a new tutorial on TT Toolbox version 2.0. I'm Sergey from Core, and today I'd like to show you how to use Grasshopper and TT Toolbox in order to read and visualize attributes attached to your geometry in Rhino. For those of you who don't know, it is possible to attach additional information to any object in your Rhino document in the form of object attributes. If you click on an object and then go to the Properties panel, and then find the section called Attribute User Text that allows you to enter key value pairs, also known as attributes. So here I can add this plus button. And let's say I want to mark this box as an existing site condition so that I know that in the context of my project, this is something that already exists and it isn't part of my design. So what I can type is existing as a key. And since I want to mark it as in fact existing on the site, I can say existing true. Similarly, if I would want to mark something else as new and not currently existing as a site condition, I could mark it as existing false, just as an example. Of course, the most efficient way of using attributes is to assign and read them programmatically. We actually have a whole video explaining how to write object attributes from Grasshopper to Baked Rhino Geometry using TT Toolbox. So if you missed it, I recommend you check it out. In case of this model, uh, it was actually brought into Rhino from Revit uh, using Rhino inside Revit. And so we have all of the associated BIM information. Now, the question is, how can we access this baked in BIM data from Grasshopper so that we could visualize it or do some other things with it? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop open Grasshopper and create a geometry component. Now selecting all of the elements that I'm interested in, I'm going to set multiple geometries. And now I have everything referenced in Grasshopper. The next step is to pull out the GUIDs of all of these components. So now I have about a thousand of GUIDs. And this is when I can go to the TT Toolbox panel, go to Documents, and pick the Get Attributes component. This is going to take a second. So what I have now is I have a number of attribute objects. Each attribute object can be deconstructed to actually reveal the information containing inside. So here I have the object name, which in this case is just a unique Revit ID. Uh, I can check out the object layer. Uh, the way the layers were baked is by family ID, if I'm not mistaken. And I also have keys and values, which represent the keys and values or attributes in the table that we've been looking at earlier. So now that we have this information in Grasshopper, how can we visualize it? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hide all of our Rhino geometry. And next, I'm going to create a component called key value search. And what this will allow me to do is it will allow me to select a specific property or a specific attribute that I want to visualize. Um, so let's say I want to visualize the height of these curtain wall panels. So I'm going to create a panel named height, and I'm going to feed this into this component. Now, it's okay that we have an orange warning saying that search key height was not found. That's only for certain geometry elements because not every former BIM element uh, in this document has this property. So what we can do now is um, we can take a look at what's actually inside. And here we see that we are getting some values and other values are null for objects that do not have this attribute. So in order to clean up our data a little bit, 
uh, I'm going to use the replace null component in Grasshopper. And let's say that we want to replace all the nulls with zeros. So I'm going to create a panel with a zero. Let's cast it as an integer just to be safe. And now everything that formerly was a null um, is a zero. I'm going to flatten this just to match the flat list uh, that our geometry is coming through as. And um, now we can visualize it. So let's first create the bounce component. And this will tell us the upper and lower bound of the values that we have in our list. So this goes from 0 to 4725. And now we can deconstruct this domain Uh, deconstruct domain and next we can create a gradient so I'm going to pass the start and end of our domain to the lower limit and upper limits of the gradient component and then the actual values that are coming from our geometry to the parameter input. I can also right click on the gradient component and pick a different preset just so that we can see the differences a little bit easier. And what I can do now is use a custom preview component in order to visualize the height. So I'm going to feed the color as the material input and then I'm going to feed our geometry into the geometry input. So as you can see, we successfully visualized all of our panels based on the geometry, or rather based on the height parameter. And we can do this with any attribute that is a numerical value in that table. Now, what if we want to visualize our geometry by some other value that is not a number. Uh, let's say we want to color all of our geometries by their Revit family. So if I show our Rhino geometry once again, and we can take a look at the attributes. So the Revit family is not actually a number. So we would not be able to create the same domain between a lower and a higher value. So how can we work around that? I am actually going to copy paste uh, a part of this definition. So let's take this and instead of height, we're going to say family. And here, um, I imagine that there will still be some geometries that will not have a family, which can happen sometimes if you have a mixture of geometry that came from Revit and geometry that was created purely in Rhino. So I'm going to replace this not with a zero, but let's just say unknown, and then feed this to the replace replacement uh, input. So now we have a clean list of all of the possible family types. So now we have to convert them into a numerical value. So how can we do this? Well, um, first of all, let's disable the old preview so that uh, we're not confused by the coloring we just did. Um, I'm also going to hide the Rhino geometry. So Let's create a component called create set. And what this does, it takes a list and then creates a unique set of elements so that every string that we're passing it or every number or any other type of data 
will appear in the set only once. So we went from 1034 values to 34 values. And a nice thing about a set is that it will also generate a map which basically gives you indices of where in the set each of the elements of the list appears um, as an index. So what we can do now is we can directly use this as the numbers to feed to our gradient component. So what I'll do is I'll copy this bit of our definition and I'm going to pass the map into the bounds component and then pass the same map into the parameter. So now I'm going to use a different preset and once again, custom preview, we can feed the color directly as a material and then we can feed our geometry as geometry. So you might notice a couple of things. First of all, it might seem a little weird that these curtain wall panels are different from the rest. But actually, this is correct. If we show the Rhino geometry and then pick one of those panels, you will see that the family, and we can search for the word family, is rabbit panel type system panel solid. So let's remember that. If I pick a panel next to it, it says Revit panel type, system panel glazed. So they are actually different. So far, so good. Now, this might not show us all of the information that we want because our glass panels became opaque and they're blocking the view of the elements inside. So can we filter some of the elements um, inside of this model. And of course we can. So let's go back to Grasshopper. And I'm going to create the match text component. So what this allows us to do, it allows us to select the strings or select the pieces of text that contain a certain pattern. So what pattern could this be? Well, if we look, let's say, at the um, family and type, we can see that all of these panels start with Revit panel type. So what we can do is we can just make sure that we are hiding everything that contains Revit panel type. How do we do this? We'll create a new panel. Revit panel type. And in order to make this a pattern, what I'm going to do is I'm going to surround it with two stars or so-called wildcard characters, which basically say, hey, this piece of text can start with anything and it can end also with anything. So now that we have this pattern, you can see that it says that some of the strings are false, meaning that they do not contain this pattern and some of the strings are true. So now we can revert uh, this Boolean value. So we will add a gates not component because we want to filter out the families that contain Revit panel type, which means that we want to keep the ones that do not. So um, I'm going to next create the call pattern component and I can pass the list of our families and then pass this pattern that we've created by checking um, these family names for containment of the specific string. So we will only be selecting family types that do not contain this pattern. And I can copy this component and using the same input pattern of Boolean values, I can also filter out the geometry. 
So I'll make sure to hide both of these elements, not to interfere with the coloring. Um, and now I can feed my family types to the set and then feed the geometry to the geometry input of the preview component. And what we see inside is all of our geometry colored by the different family types that they belong to that we were able to extract from the attributes in the Rhino document. All right, folks, this is our tutorial. So now you know how to extract attributes from a Rhino document and use them to color your geometry by a specific value. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.